How can agents thrive now and into the future? Find out today on another Ask 5 mashup on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 261. You can find all of those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Well, we're up to question number five, the last one of our season one Ask Five mashup. So let's get right to it. Let's see what the gang has to say. <laughs> and our fifth question, Ludi, um, is what what actually is your best advice um, uh, that you can give to agents to help them thrive, not only this year, but you know, throughout their real estate career? I'm going to give an advice that I myself to work on taking from me. Uh, you have to start with a solid, organized schedule. Uh, again, I, I am, I'm still working on time managing and organizing my schedule better. But if you start and be organized from day one, it's going to make your life so much better and so much easier. And you're not going to struggle as much. So number one, make sure you have uh, uh, your schedule organized better. Number two, social media, social media, social media. Um, I just have one of the team members on my team now. She's a brand new agent, just got her license like five seconds ago. <laughs> and one of the one of the rules they have on my team is that they have to post on social media every day. Some yeah. of them do, some of them still shy. They're not really all out there yet, but I'm still like helping them out. She sent me a message a couple of days ago with a screenshot of someone reaching out to her wants to talk about how to get into an investment property mind you she doesn't have experience he doesn't know that she doesn't have experience right. um and she's brand new she just posts like because they're most of them are still brand new so i have a group chat with them and i send them ideas of what to post on social media to make it a little bit easier for them and get them more comfortable to be out there and right. she has a client she's working on just from simply posting on instagram so social go. media is is a big deal and and then you told me about social media from day one so but um, you said consistency and see the, there's a yeah. lot of agents that say oh i'm going to go do instagram and then they post once a week once a, then it becomes once a month and that's not going to work it's got to be every day yeah. you have to be consistent really? you have to post every day um and then you have to build trust anybody that you're going to work with you have to build that trust and you have to be yourself uh, no one can do you better than you. That's the unique trait that you have. So for me, I'm, I'm bubbly, I'm outgoing, I'm friendly, I talk, I'm loud, I'm out there. No one can, can act like me, better than me. So I have to be myself. I have to, to build that kind of trust with my clients and the rest is, that's it. It's, it's as simple as that. It's very simple if you do it. Just do it. Just, Just do it. Do it. Just freaking do it. Be adaptable. Uh, understand that the basics never change. Um, if it is harder to find clients, which it is, you gotta you gotta work harder. The secret to every single successful agent that's ever existed is they never they never took. Vinnie Tracy, who's the president of Realty One Group, says it best. There is no time to let your foot off the gas. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I live by that philosophy. We, I tell the agents, you don't coast. If you want a real estate career that does this, go ahead and do that. But if you want a real estate career that just kind of does this, keep your foot on the gas, never stop doing what it was that made you successful. The problem is we get a couple of deals and we kind of, oh, you yeah, know, we'll coast. And then we got to roll in and try to find them again. And it becomes this panic system. If you just do a certain amount of work on a consistent basis and be very consistent about it and have the right attitude, yeah. you'll be successful. But you just have to, you just have to learn to adapt to different markets, right? That's all the reason I said in the beginning, you got to understand that this market right now is all about sellers and buyers that need to sell or have to buy. If you can understand that, then that's who you're talking. That's who you adapt your market towards, right? You're not going to convince somebody to buy or sell mm -hmm. if, if the timing's not right for whatever reason. So anyway, adaptability and, and just working hard. Wow. I'm super, kind of super inspired today. Barry, I feel like you're talking to me on a couple of times and I've got some <laughs> mental notes and uh, that was, that was a good coaching session. Uh, 100% consistency. 
Um, I, I, this is not an easy business. And if you're getting into it thinking that it is, you are absolutely mistaken. It is, yes, is there luck in it? Some people have luck. Very, very, very rare. But it always concerns me and, and, and really bums me out when agents will give up. Um, oh, I, I, I've been calling these people for three months and I, I'm not, you know, this is hard. Or, I, you know, I, I've been farming this area for a year and nothing. I'm like, well, because you need a few more years. Yeah. This doesn't happen overnight. And so my advice is stay consistent. Don't try something for two months and say it didn't work because that's not how this industry exactly. works. You got you to gotta share with people why they should trust you. And that takes time. You know, relationships are not, that's why they call it dating. You, you got to date for a while to understand if you guys are a fit. And you don't think the consumer's, you know, thinking the same thing. So my advice is, do you? Don't do what Jan's doing or Matt's doing because you're not Matt or Jan. Yeah, and perfect. it's very easy to get sucked in and be a follower. Very hard to succeed when you're a follower. You got to be extremely independent and, and understand your values and uh, respect your values and, and your value prop and stay in your lane. Do you and do it consistently? Could not agree with that more. Absolutely. It's basically, what I say: not find your passion, find your groove, find what you're good at in this business. Oh, because isn't that an well. easy concept? It's easy, but why is it so hard? Why? Exactly. Why is it so hard for them to get it? Yeah. So. Uh, but if it was easy, then everybody be doing it, and people it. would exactly. be able to to thrive and and really do well in this business. So there it is, right? Yeah. So it's not for everyone, but yeah. there we go. Be coachable. You know, put your ego aside. You never arrive, right? I don't care who you are. There's another ceiling. There's another level. So you have to keep learning. And um, more so than anything, you know, do the work. Of course, be consistent. These are the easy ones. But take care of what you can control. And you know, make your business, make your life evergreen and built for any season because you're going to need it. And I think if you can control the things that are not business related, like your physical health and your mental health, that stuff will play more of a part in your business and show up more than anything. So I was like, you know, a morning routine isn't just some meme or some fun thing. A morning routine is a contract with yourself that the more you show up, right? The more you believe in yourself, the more you'll trust yourself, the more you'll have confidence in yourself, the more you'll have certainty in yourself. And then when you have to bet on yourself and invest in your business, you will be worthy to bet on yourself. So I'm like, yeah, going for a one hour walk in the morning is actually going to make you a ton of money. And then have some fun along the way. No one said this has to be serious all the time. If you go, you go make a life, you'll go make a business. So yeah. Dang. I could not agree with you more on that. Let me tell you, brother. I'll bring this back to, to brand. Every, every successful real estate agent uh, and broker has a powerful personal brand, whether they were deliberate about it or not. Uh, I mean, we've done that research to top production. Everybody's got that, um, that promise of value that's wrapped up in a brain tattoo that they've created uh, with a kind of a 360 degree assault for total market mind share is what we call it. And that's uh, making sure your brochure looks just like your email signature, looks just like your postcard, looks just like your presentation. So that this creates this credibility of brand that aligns with specific people. And when they look at it, even peripherally, they know that, wow, this, this person's really taking care of their business. And that means they can probably take care of my needs really easily too. And so that's what we're trying to do. And, um, and that's what resonate and compels is, is about. And uh, I'm excited to get that out in, in book and work that work for you all are coaching with your programs, which I think are fantastic. And, uh, and that's what it'll be is a, a small little program on setting your business up right at the beginning. And then you still have all those other columns of activities to do. And you got your presentations and your consultations and you 
you've got to know your contracts and contingencies and conditions and your timelines. You've got to be an agent. But the, the aspect of kind of packaging yourself was always put in the background, but it's really important. So that's, that's my number five. Okay, let me put it this way. It is something called W-O-R-K. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Okay. I, I'm going to be a little bit clear. It's something called go do the basic. Do the basic. And the basic is not that difficult. And the people they succeed or the relatives they succeed, when they shift it away from the basic, they fail. So what is the basic? It's very simple. Okay. Number one, like Jeanne always say in her classes, do as much as you can contact with people, making phone call, talk to people, text people, email people, go to the for sale by owner, ha shake their hand in the open houses, make the contact. Without not making this contact, you're not going to go nowhere. Number one. Now, what is the source of the business? Like Jean always say, and I learn a lot from her, by the way. You know what? Really, the business is not that it is. You know what? Everything in life is about something called commitment. Either you are committed to succeed or you choose to fail and you can blame everybody. You know, but the only thing you can blame, don't even blame yourself. You know who you should blame? When you go look at the mirror, blame the, the person you see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the person's fault. It's not your fault. It's like, it's that dude. But we'll go back again. It's it, Do the basic. Yeah. And the basic is not that difficult. It's a look at this as running a business. Yeah. You, this, you have to, this. This is not a sometimes type of thing. And there are a lot of people that do well that do it sometimes. Um, but this is this is a full-time job. Um, this is this This is. Um, you know, we try to teach nine to five if we can, you know, so that they have time with their family and, and things like that line. But you have to look at this as you're running a business within the business. It's, it's yours. Um, you run it how you see fit for us. As long as you're doing it morally, ethically and professionally, we're good with it. But look at this as a business. That's the only way that I think that you're going to succeed and to be consistent in it um, and, you know, investing in yourself right? You're keeping your money. So you're not investing in our company, so to speak, you're investing back in yourself. And so, you know, let's, let's do the activities that are really business oriented. Um, and you have to be disciplined and you have to be consistent in what you're doing. Well said. Consistency is a yeah. consistent theme in this one. The market is changing. And so it's imperative that you change your marketing. I've seen, you know, in 20 years, and, you know, I went through the foreclosure, I, I've seen buyer's markets, I've seen seller's markets, um, you know, some uh, staying in touch with your sphere is, is key, right? Setting up your database, staying in touch with them on a regular basis, but also make sure that your marketing and what you're doing is, you know, at the top level that it can be and, and make sure that you're um, giving value to your clients. Beautiful. Perfectly said. Definitely just continue to invest in those relationships, right? Um, love people. It's, and, and real estate happens during generally during hard times in people's lives or changes in people's lives, mm -hmm. right? Like people are, you know, getting married, getting divorced, having kids, um, kids moving out, right? Job relocations, things like that. Like, you know, there's not too often people wake up on a Thursday and be like, I want to buy a house this weekend, right? There's, there's generally a life event happening, something's, you know, causing them to, to move um, or need, you know, need new accommodations. Right. And so, you know, just really be involved in people's lives, love on them, know what's happening. Um, and, you know, when that happens, they're going to come to you, right. Because they trust you, right. You want to be that trusted advisor. Um, you know, if you've ever read Ninja Selling, I'm sure you guys have, but um, you know, for folks listening, Ninja Selling ties a lot into Buffini and they have something called forward calls, right? So, which stands for family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? So yeah. if those are the four things you can learn about your clients and your friends, right? How's their family doing, right? What, what are their kids up to? What is, you know, um, how's their occupation? What's happening at work, right? What have you done for fun? So recreation. And then, man, like, you know, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do? Like, what, what's your dream? Like, what are, what are you dreaming about in the next five years? And if you can learn about those things, like, you're going to have a client for life, but also just an, an amazing relationship and a new friend. So, 
Another big list. However, we want to keep it simple, right? right. And Jan, I know you talk about this ad nauseum on, on the podcast and probably in your coaching and all that is, you know, having that routine, uh, that daily routine where you have a perfect daily schedule built and you're focused on the big rocks of your business and your life, meaning mm -hmm. self-care, right? Getting that yes. out of the way in the mornings, yes. right? And you, why do Thanks, we coach. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Keep, on. Bring, keep bringing it. Okay. And, uh, you know, blocking time, blocking that at least one hour of go time, right? Of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making your phone calls to your sphere or, you know, door knocking or whatever the heck you're choosing, right? Like, I'm not yeah. going to go down the list of items, but yep. whatever it is that's, that jazzes you to go out and, and kill it in the business and working on that. And the other thing is a lot of people are working from home, as you know, many people are, and agents have for many years before COVID even hit. Um, and, and, and what happens is, is they get there and they go to pick up that phone to call those people they haven't talked to in a long time and they freeze. Yeah. And then they start looking at the lint on the floor and then they have a really clean home at the end of the freaking day, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, 100% true. You know, it's, it's just something else. I, I personally am not like that anymore. However, maybe I was at some point, I don't really know. Um, However, that schedule cannot be buried in your Gmail. You need to print it, guys. You need to put it up in front of you. You yeah. are in the schedule following business. And it's what you put in that schedule and what you follow that's going to get done. And that's the biggest thing I can share. So there's a lot of fillers in there, right? There's how you're going to do it. There's, mm -hmm. you know, the steps you take to do it and all that. Um, but get the training on that. If you already know what to do, put something together and get out and just start doing it. Yeah. Yeah, you got to, it's, you know, it's the fundamentals right now. Honestly, more than anything, it's just getting back to the fundamentals. Find what works for you. Time block it in your schedule. Yes, Don't let thank anything you. interfere with it. Don't let an appraisal interfere with it. Don't let a physical inspection interfere with it. Just make sure that yes. that's sacred. And that's you know, we all have those things that are just going to drive uh, income. And, you know, follow up is a, is probably the biggest hole of, in any agent's business. So time block your follow up or just do it throughout the day, you know, mm -hmm. but you got to find a way uh, to keep yourself, uh, you know, uh, I guess, disciplined to do that, you know. So I think this year, as we see a shift in the market, the name of the game is getting back to the basics. It's getting back to the blocking and tackling and the, the, the very basics of the business. Are we staying in communication with our people? Are we knowing how to convey the truth of what's happening in the market versus what they're hearing in the news um, and talking about data and answering questions? I think that's the big one for this year. Moving forward, I don't think that that really changes, but I really think that everything comes down to your daily disciplines. Like what are the, I just, it's the, you know, it's the compound effect or whatever you want to call it. Um, another great book, by the way, uh, Actually. It, you know, it's the cumulative result of your daily effort and trying to just get 1% better every day. Wow. Whoa. Well, okay. Our work is done here. <laughs> We've got a lot of good information for our, our folks today. Good. Thank you, Chance. That was really yeah. great stuff, really straight up. Awesome. Well, that's a wrap on the season one. Ask Five Mashups. How great it was to sit down with these 12 really inspirational uh, thought leaders uh, in their marketplaces and in the real estate industry as a whole. So we were so lucky to sit down with each and every one of them. Um, you can find that sh uh, that playlist over on our YouTube channel if you want to go back and watch all of those uh, interviews again, as well as all their contact information in our show notes right here, which you can find at WBNLpodcast.com. Uh, this was episode 261. We have a few more um, uh, Ask Five interviews for season two um, that are going to be airing over the next couple months here as we close out 2023. And then season three starts January of 2024. So once again, all of the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Uh, that's going to do it for today. Jen O'Brien will be back with us next week. And, um, you know, everyone, just get up, get out, live the life you've dreamed, and be forever wandering but not lost. <laughs>